Hello, just a quickie. Uh, thought it'd be worth interesting looking at uh, a megalithic site, Sumba in Indonesia. Now, it's uh, there are thousands and thousands of these uh, megalithic stoneworks that have been done across the island. And here are some um, examples. I'll put some links in the description because there's, again, thousands and thousands of uh, these uh, and they're, there are some varying types. So there's your standard table, but there's also your um, well, all sorts of uh, menhirs. And uh, here's one of the uh, larger, more um, interesting, more elaborate ones of these megaliths. Here's just to get an idea of, um, uh, I suppose, the medium-sized ones. But you see, the uh, it's not just your standard carving. Again, a bit like that Goblecky Tepi style. Whether the um, it's uh, what's well, is it a relief to term, but it's not. It's like the the stone has been cut away to leave the designs rather than to just carved into the stone. Again, thousands and thousands of these. But what's really interesting and special about this site is that these uh, gravestones and um, uh, here's like another example of a table one. You even notice the the way the edges are cut. Now what's really cool about that is that Sumba here, uh, they're still making these. So these is not some ancient, um, you know, lost in time. What we still, what we have is actual photographs of them moving these types of stones. And again, with some uh, simple hand weaved rope and uh, some simple tools, you know, harnessing uh, the uh, Again, know-how. Now, here's, here's a picture of that stone being moved. And very. this is the, you know, the muddy jungle. So, and But we can see uh, here we're just using simple manpower. There's no mechanical advantage except for these levers here at the bottom. And why that's important is, well, we're going to see it in a second, but it's the steepness of this hill. And so now we see it's climbing up a very steep hill, so it's adding quite a bit of energy and efforts being used into there but again it's pure manpower so you know you see these two teams uh, pulling off um, to, to to move a stone again up you know, uh, the slipperiness of the mud will would help in some aspects however not because they all well, they had to put these uh, um, r uh, rails across to get the uh, to help with the the stone being slid up and again just pure manpower and even get a picture so that's the stone and the sled uh, that they um, used on there again this is uh, you know it's no no shrinking violet but it's interesting well even the, the the cutting of it now at this time so they had steel swords and and some weapons but the the trade for for this was still very limited so it was you know for, across the islands and so again, this was um, uh, hand cut with stone, uh, stone axes, and uh, where do we get you know? And it's it's again, it's uh, you know, it's, it's no small thing. And again, we see these tabletops. So they're able to do you know again with simple techniques uh, to do quite you know what some other people would would say was impossible with hand tools or, and cutting with stone well again it's not it's just it's quite there there's more than enough um evidence of, out there but this makes this special because we literally have photos of these these were still being done up until the age of photography and just to, it gives us an insight so again they were carrying on with ancient techniques now they're still making these, but the newest ones are made of concrete and they're harnessing mechanical advantage. They don't need these uh, large teams to move the stone anymore because they have pulleys and winches and electrical uh, or, or combustion engine combined with electrical motors to um, move them now. So, but we've again, with the simplest, simplest of, of technology, not only were they able to cut these stones, they're also able to move them up, up these steep incline of of these hills and and because of the mud and the slipperiness that's why you need these uh large teams as well and at this point where it's very steep they need to prepare it as opposed to other sites 
Um, now this stone is, uh, let's be honest, it's not as large as the largest stone in the foundation of uh, Baalbek. Uh, however, Baalbek is level to, the quarry site is level to there and you don't, you know, you're not climbing, cutting up through a jungle and all the mud and, and everything uh, that goes with it. And so even, you know, and then with uh, that the Phoenicians were famous for sailing and that they understood uh, rigging is what's been uh, found. So, you know, using mechanical advantage, we can get a bit of an aspect of it. But this is, you know, by no means this is not an open or cut or shut case. In, in that, you know, we don't know about the um, exactly how it was done. But by looking at, you know, that this ancient traditions of these, you know, let's uh, not to be uh, offensive, but primitive culture, let's call it primitive technologically, in that they're not even harnessing mechanical advantage of a pulley or a winch, and they're able to get it up a, a steep, muddy jungle hill. Um, and again, quite impressive, and I just think it's worth, uh, int you know, it's worth uh, worth noting that these things, um, as with so many other, you know, a few people getting together doing stuff can achieve uh, supposedly Im impossible um, things, and this is just one example of it. So again, it's like, how did they, you know, lifting and putting this stone into place? Uh, it's it was done. It was done with very simple tools. The carvings were, was done, and and again, it's not up for conjecture, be, up, up for debate, because we actually even the descriptions and the photographs of the time are still there, and and this is one of the last surviving of all the last surviving uh, megalith um, cultures. And so anyway, with that, just some info. Hope you enjoyed. Have a good one.